Hello, my name is Andy and thank you for watching this tutorial about Blue Letter Bible's newly developed Greek inflection tool. Now some of you may be wondering, what is a Greek inflection and why build a Greek inflection tool? So I'd like to briefly address these questions before showing you an example of how our Greek inflection tool works on the website. Now if you already know what a Greek inflection is, then you can fast forward to see how the tool works. But for the rest of you, let's briefly take a look at what a Greek inflection is. Merriam-Webster defines an inflection as the change of form that words undergo to mark such distinctions as those of case, gender, number, tense, person, mood, or voice. This definition may not be so simple to understand, so let's look at an example in the English language using the noun teach. We may alter the root form teach by changing the ending to teaches, or teacher, or teachers, or teachers with an apostrophe. Each addition is a change in form of the word and would be considered an inflection. And each inflection changes how that root word teach should be understood. However, it doesn't always work that way in the English language. Take the word milk. By looking at the word milk, there is no way to know whether it is a noun or a verb, nor how it should be used in a sentence. For example, I will milk the cow. Here it's used as a verb in the future tense. Or go to the store to buy some milk, in which it's used as a noun, and it's a direct object. Or the milkman came to my house. Here it's used as an adjective. You see, the English language is much more dependent on the word order rather than the inflection. The ancient Greek language used in the New Testament, however, is an inflected language, meaning that it contains many more inflections and those inflections inform the meaning of a word as well as how that word fits into a sentence. Now let's take a look at an example in the Greek language. The Greek word for abide is meno. The inflected form mene could mean he or she abides. If you change the form to mene with an eta and an iota subscript, the meaning changes and could be translated he would abide, he may abide, or even let him abide. Now the Greek language with all of its different parts of speech comes with rules of interpretation that go much deeper than our simple example. In fact, if you'd like to dig deeper into the Greek grammar, you can download our Greek grammar guide written by ancient language expert Justin Alford by clicking the Greek grammar button. So why build a Greek inflection tool? This tool will help you identify Greek words that use the same or similar parts of speech throughout the New Testament. Now remember, the Greek inflection tool is a wonderful tool, but it is only one of many tools that help you to more precisely understand God's word as God intended. So be careful not to draw conclusions based upon one filtered search, because other key aspects such as the historical and literary context, the words, grammar, and genre, they all contribute to the meaning of a passage. So let's jump in and take a look at how the Greek inflection tool works on Blue Letter Bible. Let's say you're studying 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. The one who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. And now let's say you want to see how the word abides is used in the same inflected form elsewhere in the New Testament. Simply open up the tools feature and find the word abides in the Greek interlinear. As we saw earlier, the root word for abides is meno. The inflected form for abides is mene. By clicking on the parsing button, you will see that mene is given in the present indicative active third person singular. Now you can click on the Strong's number G3306 to visit the lexicon page for that Greek root meno. Here you find all of the different inflected forms for that verb. You can now see that in the MGNT, that's the Morphological Greek New Testament, there are 118 occurrences of meno in 31 unique forms. Before we release the Greek inflection tool, you'd have to analyze all 118 occurrences of meno in the New Testament using our Strong's Concordance. This is still a great resource if you'd like to see every occurrence of the word in the New Testament, regardless of its inflected form. But if you'd like to refine your search even more, you can go to the Greek inflection tool and search for your word by its specific inflected form. If you remember, the inflected form of meno in 1 John chapter 2 verse 10 is mene. 
which is present, indicative, active, third person, singular. Click on Mene to see all of the results for that specific form in the New Testament. You'll certainly want to take some time to understand how this word is used within the various contexts it is given. From there, you may want to broaden your search to other inflected forms. To do so, simply hover over the other forms to see how they are inflected. For example, if you want to see how mene is used in the second person, click on menes. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you. We want to thank the many faithful supporters of Blue Letter Bible for helping us to make this tool available. If the Lord would so lead you to help us develop more features like this, then we encourage you to prayerfully consider a gift of support today by clicking on the Support BLB button. The link is also provided in the description below. Thank you for joining us for this tutorial, and may the Lord richly bless your study of His Word.